am i audible and visible yes okay uh, fine uh, so hey guys i am nivesh uh, i am uh, like currently i am studying btech i am doing my btech uh, in mechanical engineering uh, from one of the colleges in kerala so i have been in this uh, blockchain and crypto field for the past two years and i have been and worked with so many protocols within this uh, year so i have little experience in this field so that's why i am here to talk about this and uh, talk on this topic okay so that's a short uh, intro about me so um, you guys are ready right um, can i see some like energy in the chat box guys yeah yeah i can see some like responses uh, from mirtu and daksha that's yeah fine okay so we have to keep this energy and enthusiasm like uh, till the end of this session okay so by saying that uh, i am starting this session uh, okay uh, can you see my screen yes okay okay uh, so uh, we are talking about uh, talking on the topic web, uh, introduction to web3 today okay uh, so before talking about web3 what web3 is we have to know what web1.0 and web2.0 is then only you will understand what web3.0 or why web3.0 is established in this uh, world okay so now let's look into what web web 1.0 is web 1.0 is the read only phase of internet okay so at that time uh, uh, at the time of uh, web 1.0 we were not able to interact with the internet like we do now like uh, we were not able to do comments we were not able to uh, post our views uh, and or in the internet so nowadays uh, you know like we can post our views and on in the uh, internet through so many social medias then we can comment on uh, so many posts like, come, like we can express our views through uh, interacting with the internet now okay so before that i mean at the uh, early time of uh, web like internet the it was not possible we were uh, only able to read uh, the content that uh, that was given in the internet so uh, that was a problem with web 1.0 okay that was the initial stage of uh, like uh, internet then uh, web 1.0 web 2.0 came okay then uh, why web 2.0 is established okay so don't treat web 2.0 and web 3.0 as a new thing or different thing okay because web 2.0 is the uh, like is an improvement uh, to web 1.0 okay web 2.0 is established as an improvement to the web 1.0 okay so we discussed what was the problem with web 1.0 in web 1.0 we were only able to read uh, the contents that were given in the internet so when web 2.0 came like we were able to interact with the internet the applications that we use majority to and we we all use today like uh, facebook whatsapp instagram and all like we are able to interact with them right we are able to express our views through them we are able to uh, like post anything uh, there and we are able to comment on the like comment our views on any other post and all okay simply we are able to interact with the internet so that was the i mean uh, that was not possible uh, that was not possible in web 1.0 and that was the thing that web 2.0 brings to the world okay so now coming coming to web 3.0 the, we are seeing lot of buzz around uh, web 3.0 nowadays like uh, blockchain nft defi metaverse blah 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 we are seeing lot of things uh, around us nowadays okay so don't treat this as a i mean like as i said before don't treat this as a like uh, different thing or a complex thing it's just an improvement to what we see today okay what we are seeing today we are seeing web 2.0 today it's just an improvement to web 3.0 okay so i told that uh, web 2.0 came as an improvement to web 1.0 the it solved a problem that was with web 1.0 so if we have to understand web 3.0 we have to know what was the problem with web 2.0 then only we will understand why it came or why such a uh, like such a technology emerged in the world okay so what was the problem with web 2.0 i think uh, like i am i'm sure that majority uh, majority like uh, present here will uh, know the problem with web 2.0 okay sorry uh, okay in web 2.0 the major 
major problem is that like a central authority is controlling everything so uh, when we um, like okay look at the facebook in the like uh, instagram whatsapp and all that we uh, like use on a daily basis today these are the applications that we use most nowadays okay these all these are web 2.0 applications what's the problem with web 2.0 these are controlled by a central authority right the facebook or the meta okay now it rebranded to meta the meta company is controlling everything it has the complete authority over it it has the like it has the authority to change anything in this system it has authority to do anything even they can do some malpractices uh, here like uh, we so uh, we are seeing lot of news about the data privacy and all nowadays now uh, like uh, the uh, these are these targeted advertisements and all they are like uh, selling our data uh, to some other third party companies for profit okay without our permission okay so that's the major problem with web 2.0 when like uh, if we see banks and all also the banks uh, the banking system is also highly centralized nowadays the if uh, if like okay if my bank decides uh, to uh, like not give back my money to me okay i i won't be able to withdraw uh, the, my money from that okay so actually the money that i uh, deposited in the bank is <laughs> like uh, to be frank it's not like it will not be my money okay it will be in their hand we are only able to access that if they give the permission to do that okay we will deposit our money our hard earned money into the uh, like our bank account but we will be on, we will only be uh, like uh, able to use that when they when they give access uh, us for us to use that okay they can i mean uh, there is a chance of the, they uh, like uh, they, they i mean they don't allow us okay so like we so many i mean we so uh, like uh, we are seeing so many news nowadays like freezing of bank accounts and all they can freeze our bank accounts if they want okay so that we will not be able to withdraw our money from that okay so the that's a major problem with uh, web 2.0 it's highly centralized everything in the world is controlled by a central authority and that is totally against the concept of democracy okay and uh, someone like uh, in web 2.0 like some uh, like centralized powers are ruling us or some centralized powers are taking control of our lives our money and all okay so that's a major problem with web 2.0 okay data privacy and uh, like all uh, other threats related to this centralization okay so web 3.0 came as a solution to this okay we discussed what was the problem with web 2.0 now uh, we can look into the look into why web3 came here okay so why web3 came here web3 uh, is the solution to the problems that web2 brings okay so we uh, so like uh, we uh, like i keep on mention that web2.0 is highly centralized that's the major problem with web2.0 so web3 when web3.0 came like this was a problem that web3.0 is trying to solve web 3.0 is a completely decentralized system or it brings completely decentralized system okay for example if we see uh, there are so many protocols that, like already uh, like uh, doing repl uh, replicates of what we use today in web 2 like um, uh, have you any like uh, if uh, you are familiar with the lens protocol it's the uh, decent like decentralized replica of uh, that uh, facebook uh, whatsapp and that, that kind of social media so, okay then odes is the replica of uh, spotify Yes, there are there are so many replicas of uh, like web 2.0 products coming into web 3 nowadays so what's the major difference these are not controlled by a central authority a central authority cannot decide what to do with these applications or what to do with the data of uh, the persons interacting with these applications and all okay a central authority cannot decide whether to give him money or not and all okay so how is this possible how is uh, like uh, this this being possible that's what we discussing today okay, that's the major topic uh, i am going to discuss today how this is becoming possible okay uh, so uh, like while talking about web3 there are so many uh, misconceptions that web3.0 equal to blockchain okay web3.0 is not exactly equal to blockchain web3 like blockchain we can say blockchain is a uh, subset of web3 okay 
there are so many other uh, distributed ledger technologies i will come to that what are distributed ledger technologies and i'll uh, come to that uh, like uh, after a few minutes okay so now just understand that web blockchain is uh, not equal to web 3.0 blockchain is a subset of web 3.0 okay uh, then there are so many other distributed ledger technologies that are powering web 3.0 like uh, blockchain uh, like uh, hash hash graph uh, dax uh, and all okay uh, so there are so many other distributed ledger technologies powering uh, web 3 like uh, blockchain okay blockchain is just one among them okay uh, dax hash graphs are all the uh, other uh, distributed ledger technologies fine uh, so uh, our point like uh, point of focus is blockchain today so let's uh, look into blockchain what blockchain is uh, and what actually how of course what cryptocurrency is and all so what is blockchain okay uh, so as we discuss like web3 brings decentralization to the world okay web3 brings decentralization to everything that we uh, use nowadays uh, for example uh, okay okay first of all let's say blockchain is a decentralized distributed ledger technology let's uh, like start by saying that okay blockchain is a decentralized distributed ledger technology don't be afraid of this like hectic name okay it will be simple when i explain it by switching the this uh, word okay so uh, i said blockchain is a decentralized distributed ledger technology okay so uh, we can split this uh, into two first decentralized then distributed ledger okay so what is decentralized uh, okay to for better understanding let's uh, let, let's take uh, an example okay this is an example okay uh, in current okay uh, nowadays uh, the current how 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 is the current financial system working nowadays uh, so if i am like if there is a transaction between me and nivedita uh, so if there is a transaction between me, me and nivedita uh, like when i uh, initiate initiate a transaction from my bank account the uh, transaction message will be go to the central server of that bank and that central server will verify whether i am eligible to uh, like uh, do this uh, transaction and all like it will verify like my eligibility to do this transaction okay it will uh, like that central server will verify this and it will uh, give uh, like okay uh, then if i am eligible it will give permission uh, to uh, like it to do that uh, transfer and it will do that transaction okay it will take money from uh, my account and it will deposit the uh, like money to nivedita account okay so i am just uh, saying it as an example hope you understand that okay uh, okay so uh, that's how like the system currently works okay the central server of bank the main point here is the central server of bank is verifying whether i am eligible to do this transaction or not okay so that central server that one that one or uh, like uh, the, 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 there will be some no, small number of servers which will be located uh, like which will be concentrated in a same geographical area okay so we don't have to go into that just imagine like it is a, imagine it as a single server okay so single server will be uh, like uh, verifying whether i am eligible to do do this transaction or not okay we are uh, taking financial transaction here as an example okay so what if a, an hacker came into the scene and uh, like he he uh, he can hack that uh, server okay what if a hacker came into the scene and hacked that uh, server okay what happens he can man totally manipulate this transaction and he can take take the money and uh, he can go away okay so i will be in low okay so there is a like there is a chance of high vulnerability here right there is a high chance of vulnerability here so imagine uh, okay so what we say there is a single server and the hacker came into say and he hacked everything okay so what if like rather than this there are so like uh, like we imagine that it is a single server now okay okay what if there is uh, two servers okay he the hacker had to like uh, hack these two servers what if there is uh, there are four or five or 10 uh, like uh, uh, okay what if there are 10 servers the hacker has to come into the scene and uh, hack at, at least uh, six of these uh, 10 servers okay so what if uh, it is 100 what if it is 1000 what if it is 10000 okay so the number of these uh, servers okay number of these servers increases the 
chance of vulnerability is decreases considerably okay so that the major point with this rather than concentrating rather than rather than relying on a single server to verify and validate a transaction in blockchain we are uh, relying on the or, uh, we are relying on a decentralized network a uh, decentralized network of servers okay the server will be like the servers will be decentralized uh, like will be kept decentralized over the world okay it will not be concentrated uh, on a same geographical area okay one server will be in india one server will be in america one server will be in uk and all that okay hope you understand it will be distributed around globally so it is uh, near to impossible to hack such a system okay so that's the major point with decentralization okay the nodes or the servers that are validating or verifying this transaction is highly decentralized kept decentralized okay so that's the major point with decentralization then uh, let's look into the other word okay we will explain what decentralization is we like, uh, said that blockchain is a decentralized distributed ledger technology okay now let's look into what distributed ledger is okay what is distributed ledger uh, okay imagine uh, uh, the okay mm. uh, imagine you and your uh, three friends okay imagine you and your three friends are staying in a room uh, staying in a uh, room or hostel or okay so you made an agreement uh, between uh, you guys that uh, one should uh, like uh, one should pay the uh, money uh, for every expenses that uh, that is happening uh, in that uh, like room for one month okay then he can keep the records of that then the others will reimburse that amount at the last at the end of that month okay if uh, you guys uh, did such an agreement oh, yeah. so there is a point that the person who are who is keeping the records can manipulate the records and uh, earn extra money from that okay by cheating you guys he can earn extra money through that okay so it's like exploiting you and it's like losing your money okay i am taking this money as an example you can uh, like relate it to any other kind of transactions and all okay so uh, whatever transaction happened okay he can manipulate that uh, uh, that in the records and uh, he can show it to you guys and you will believe him and uh, you will give the money okay so what if rather than that while okay the system is same uh, one will pay the money uh, for like uh, for one will pay the money for a month okay so what if uh, but there is a small change what if the all of like all like uh, the four of you okay the four of you uh, there is four guys okay what if the four of you uh, keep the records of all the transaction that are happening okay so if a transaction happens all the what if all the four guys is uh, like uh, taking the note of or taking the note of that transaction or taking the records of that transaction okay so is it possible uh, for a single guy to manipulate that transaction is that possible uh, guys can you reply in the chat guys uh, am i audible yes okay so what i'm saying that is that possible if everyone in the room uh, like is keep if everyone in the room is keeping a ledger or keeping the record is that possible to manipulate that record uh, like uh, if one uh, manipulates that record what happens there there will be the correct exact record with the other three now okay they will say okay, like you are manipulating the record or you are uh, saying wrong because like we have the details okay we we have, we were also recorded the same details uh, so we have we have the record with us okay so they will say like that and uh, like they can uh, what they can remove uh, that uh, fraud guy from their room uh, from their hostel or anywhere okay so it is nearly possible to manipulate such a system okay so that's what happening with uh this uh like blockchain aspect. so we said that in blockchain the transactions are verifying or validating by a network of decentralized servers okay so uh what if like uh coming coming back to our previous situation like uh when like 
the transaction between me and Niveda, a single server is uh, a single server is validating or verifying the transaction. Okay. So at that time, if that single server we in for uh, for the first case for decentralization, we are discussed that a uh, separate hacker is coming to see. Okay. In here, while we explain in distributed ledger, there is no other hackers and all, there is no other third party. Okay, only me, Niveda server is in this scene. Okay, so what if like what if the server decides to manipulate this transaction? Okay, since he is validating or verifying this transaction, he can um, manipulate this transaction or this transaction records and uh, records now. Okay, so we can give any complaint or for because uh, in all records uh, it will be manipulated. So we will be uh, trapped. Okay. This is the same situation that were uh, that like uh, we were discussed before uh, that was happening in the whole cell. Okay. So uh, okay, in such a case, what if uh, like we said that rather than a single server, we can uh, use a like a decentralized uh, like network of servers to verify or validate this, this transaction. Okay. So what if the records of all of all these transactions is kept with all of the servers in the network? Okay, we uh, like uh, for example, if we take thousand servers in the uh, like network, okay, so thousand servers in the network that are verifying or validating this transaction. What if uh, the transaction record is kept with all of these thousand servers? Uh, so like uh, one or two uh, servers alone cannot change or manipulate this transaction and take uh, take away your money. Okay, so it it is uh, it will be impossible. Okay, since uh, like okay, uh, take an example. So we we have thousand servers and ten servers uh, decide to manipulate us. Okay, then uh, like the time if okay, take the example. There are thousand servers and uh, the records of the records of all transactions kept with all the thousand servers. Okay, so what if only ten of the uh, servers decide to change the uh, records or manipulate the record? What happens? The other 999, say 990, sorry, 990 uh, servers will uh, report that uh, you are, you guys are doing uh, like doing fraud or you guys are manipulating this uh, this transaction. We know uh, like this is not correct. We know the exact what happened with the uh, like correct transaction. We have the records of it. So we are uh, expelling you guys from uh, this network. Okay, by saying that they can uh, expel those uh, fraudulent. Uh, servers from the network they have the capability to do it do it this thing just imagine like that there are 990 uh, servers supporting right thing there are only 10 uh, servers supporting wrong thing so they can manipulate uh, they can expel uh, them from the network okay just think like that only now uh, for now okay since this is a just basic introduction you have to like imagine or think like that only then when you uh, like research thoroughly uh, into this topic you will get exactly what's happening in uh, here okay so that's the uh, major okay that's the thing that uh, that i uh, like that i have to say with the distributed ledger okay so ledger uh, what what is a ledger ledger is something that keeps records okay like keeps records of all the transactions happening okay so uh, that ledger is distributed among this decentralized network so that's what blockchain is blockchain is a decentralized distributed network technology it is decentralized, uh, like uh, the transaction, all the transactions are ver verifying or validating by a decentralized network. Then the decentralized is con like uh, decentralized uh, is matched. Then uh, it is a distributed ledger technology. The, tra the uh, details of all the transactions are recorded with all the servers in the network. So that's what distributed, uh, like uh, that's what distributed ledger means. Okay. So basically, that's the basic definition of what blockchain is. Okay. So uh, okay, I uh, now I said uh, what blockchain is. It is a decentralized and distributed ledger technology. But why it is uh, like why it is termed as blockchain? Okay, why it is termed as blockchain? Has anyone thought about that? Why it is termed as blockchain? Since uh, I told that the uh, details of all the transactions are uh, like with the like. Uh, all the details of all transactions are uh, will be with every uh, service in the network okay so uh, all these transaction records okay all these transaction records are keeping as like are uh, like are keeping as blocks are as chains of blocks in blockchain okay so that's why uh, the uh, 
it is termed as blockchain but like i will repeat once more uh, the data uh, that have to be stored in the blockchain is uh, stored in the form of block in, in form of chains of block okay so they uh, they will verify the transaction and uh, the and will uh, take the that the service will verify the transaction and rather than uh, storing it on a uh, like single server and uh, storing the details on a single server it will uh, take the uh, like transaction and it will put it into a block and it will, it will put into a block and it will add to the chain of the block and uh, then the copy of the block will be uh, with the uh, like respective nodes in the uh, network okay so that's what a blockchain means and uh, like i'll say blockchain is highly immutable highly uh, like, uh, like uh, uh, it is tamper proof highly immutable and all okay so why is it like that Uh, i said that uh, the transaction are verifying with a decentralized network that is the ledger will be with, uh, in the hands of every people in the network okay that's a that's a uh, that's one layer of uh, security the another layer of security is that after storing this uh, transaction okay so this uh, this security is happening the security that i mentioned before the decentralization distributed ledger is uh, like that i mentioned before is uh, like is valid at the time of doing transaction uh, okay the, at the time of doing transaction okay so while storing this data uh, while storing this uh, details of this uh, transaction or this data while storing this data there's another security is added okay so i to, uh, i said that uh, there will be there will be a block so after verifying and validating this transaction the transactions will be uh, like bundled together and uh, a certain a certain amount of transactions will be stored in a block according to the block size okay according to the block size a certain amount of transaction will be stored into the block okay uh, then uh, when we reach the uh, limit of the block uh, the, uh, then we will create another block with another bundle of transaction and add to the uh, chain of block and it will link to the previous chain okay then how is it linked to the previous chain okay now let's uh, discuss that so uh, i am uh, like Uh, talking some like uh, some more technical now uh, hope you can like uh, cope with that okay if not uh, you can ask doubts at any time okay so how uh, how they are doing that okay uh, while verifying or validating this transaction uh, okay so uh, let's say um, okay when while the data is stored in the block uh, in the blocks not only the trans the transaction details or the data that we have to uh, store is uh, like stored in the uh, block okay so uh, i will show the structure of a block uh, so okay this is the uh, structure of block uh, okay so i hope you can see that this is the structure of a block okay so in a block there will be block header and block body okay the transaction details and or the details that we uh, we have to store okay is stored in the uh, body of the block okay but in block header there will be some other things like uh, hash timestamp previous hash nonce uh, such things will be stored in the block header okay so uh, the timestamp is the time at which the block is generated and the uh, hash is a hash is generated at the time of uh, like um, generating the block and the hash that that hash value the generated hash value will be added to the block header and how is that linked with the next block the when the next block came into the scene uh, in the in the newly coming block uh, along with the hash of that block okay that respective block the hash of the previous block will also be added to that uh, that block okay so in a block there will be hash there will be hash of previous i mean uh, hash of previous block then times seven nodes okay Uh, don't worry about timestamp and nonce uh, like and a hash okay uh, uh, as of now you just have to focus on how it is linked okay since a hash is generated at the time of generation of a block uh, like when next block came into the scene uh, along with the hash of that respective block the uh, like hash of the previous block is also added to that uh, block okay so that's how these two blocks are uh, connected that's how the chains of blocks are formed okay so what happens uh, when uh, like a hacker comes to the scene and manipulate the uh, manipulate one block of the chain so what happens okay each uh, 
there is if the if something happens to the uh, block happens to a block the hash value of the block changes okay the hash value of block changes okay so when the hash value of a block changes the uh, uh, like the, the other block that is uh, it it the hash value of the uh, the change the uh, like manipulated block will not match with the uh, newly added block okay so i mean uh, the in the newly added block there will be hash of the original hash of the previous block okay so when uh, someone manipulate a block the hash value changes so it will not be matched with the uh, hash value that is mentioned in the uh, newly coming block okay so uh, it will not be matched and the manipulated block will be expelled from the uh, chain of block okay it will be rejected that manipulated block will be rejected okay that's how uh, the uh, like the next layer of security is added in the blockchain okay uh, like uh, i think it like it can be confusing if you are uh, like hearing it for the first time so uh, to like after today's session you will get a rough idea of what uh, this whole thing is then after that when you uh, search for an article or some video you will get a clear understanding of uh, what uh, this all okay after hearing this session you can uh, refer some articles and all to get that clear cut idea of what uh, ha what's happening uh, uh, like exactly here okay so uh, uh, like currently it is out of the uh, scope of this session so that's why i am not explaining more into the te technical since it said it's just an introduction i am not uh, going more into this technical thing okay uh, so <clears throat> i said that blockchain is a decentralized distributed ledger technology and uh, it will there will be chains of block there will be hash uh, there will be hash of previous block uh, and all okay so these are the things that we discussed so far and uh, okay for simplicity let's consider like like let's consider blockchain as an operating system also okay what uh, what happening with operating system we are uh, like building so many apps over this operating system now okay similarly we will be uh, like developing so many applications in this uh, blockchain as well okay so if you want you can consider it as an operating system also okay so uh, but in the, uh, in the operating system that we see today this uh, the, i mean the application uh, the back end of this application that we are building is connected to a central server now okay Uh, connected to central server and the, all the details will be stored in a central server but uh, in in block in the case of blockchain by building application the uh, what the all the details that is all the transactions happening in the block that the all the transactions that's happening within the application okay this can be any kind of transaction financial transaction data transaction like any kind of transaction okay so all the transaction details will be stored into blockchain that's the only difference with a decentralized application and the normal application that we see today we are hearing uh, the apps uh, like the term we are hearing the uh, term dapps the apps like uh, uh, for uh, now nowadays so many types now okay so uh, it's not a complex thing uh, just remember this on uh, this only the back end of this uh, decentralized application will be connected to the blockchain so all the transaction or the details of transactions or, or everything that happening uh, at the back end of this application will be Uh, connected with the blockchain uh, while uh, uh, like in nowadays or while the application that we uh, mostly use nowadays uh, like the back end will be connected to the central server okay that's the major difference with a decentralized application and a centralized application okay so uh, let's see uh, what cryptocurrencies we didn't uh, took that topic now so we have covered uh, blockchain what is blockchain what is web3 then uh, what is the decentralized application so far okay so uh, then now let's look into what cryptocurrency is okay what is cryptocurrency uh, cryptocurrency okay so we said before that the trans every transaction that's happening in a blockchain is ver verified or validated by a group of or network of people okay uh, a network of people okay so at that time okay okay at that time like uh, just think okay if uh, like anyone do any work for for free okay there is so much work while verifying or validating a transaction now okay if thousands or ten thousands of these servers are uh, or like the there will be a human effort behind all these servers okay so if uh, thousands or ten thousand servers or human are uh, taking efforts to verify or validate a transaction in a blockchain they have to be rewarded with something 
or otherwise they will not do the right work now okay and otherwise they will they like who spends their work for free like who spend, uh, spend their uh, like uh, effort uh, for free we like uh, no non uh, do that right so yeah uh, we have to reward these validators in the network we, we have to reward these people for verifying or validating the transactions in the network with something okay so the cryptocurrency came into the screen for that purpose mainly focusing on that purpose okay for rewarding this uh, for rewarding this uh, like uh, 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 this uh, like validators okay for rewarding this validators cryptocurrencies came into the scene okay the uh, the effort of verif these uh, people who are verifying or validating the transactions in the blockchain network is uh, compensated by rewarding the cryptocurrencies okay this crypto uh, i hope you know the cryptocurrencies have a value due to the supply and demand theory so uh, like like this they will get a monetary benefit for uh, securing this transaction or verifying this transaction okay so uh, then also the other thing uh, the uh, about cryptocurrencies all kind of value exchanges happening uh, within the blockchain will be uh, with the cryptocurrencies okay we uh, will be in the form of cryptocurrencies uh, like uh, if you say in the traditional uh, like uh, bank tra bank transactions we will uh, transact the value of or uh, yeah, the, yeah, we will transact the value with fiat cash now. Okay, but if you uh, give me, I mean, if I'm ordering a product, okay, if I'm ordering a product, uh, like uh, for example, I'm ordering something from Amazon, okay, uh, like if I'm ordering something from Amazon, I will give back the fiat currency to them, okay, to get that, okay. So, likewise, in case of blockchain, while conducting a transaction or value exchange we have to say it's a value exchange okay while we uh, doing a value exchange in a blockchain cryptocurrencies are used instead of this fiat currencies okay so these are the major two points of about cryptocurrencies cryptocurrencies are used to reward this verifiers or validators in the network and the second major point is uh, like all kind of value exchange that is happening in the blockchain network i mean or with the blockchain network is uh, like is uh, will be uh, using cryptocurrencies only okay so i think i am running out of time now uh, okay so uh, okay i think uh, we can conclude uh, okay i will say what smart contract is on like uh, then then i will conclude okay so uh, what is a smart contract okay there is an important term that you you have to understand while studying about blockchain okay that is smart contract okay so uh, blockchain actually blockchain came into the scene in the, uh, to the world uh, with the uh, like with the emergence of bitcoin okay bitcoin in 2008 okay at that time uh, we know uh, financial recession happened and the trust with the centralized banks in the world has uh, like collapsed okay that all the centralized banks collapsed all the all the economy the global economy collapsed that was because of the uh, like, uh, like improper management uh, of uh, this loan done by centralized banks okay they do did so many corruption okay that that happened mainly because of the corruption uh, of centralized banks okay so due to their mistakes so many people in the world suffered a lot okay due to the mistake with the centralized banks so many people who are not directly uh, or indirectly uh, like related to uh, all the uh, like uh, like fraud uh, fraud things they did were also affected okay so the trust with the centralized banks has collapsed at that time so at that time uh, bitcoin network came into scene and uh, it it works as like uh, we discussed before okay but this a, the one of the major problem with bitcoin blockchain is it came into scene or it, uh, it established like uh, with the aim of conducting decentralized financial transactions only okay it it came into scene or it established with the aim of uh, just conducting a decentralized financial transactions only okay only this cryptocurrency transactions okay so uh, like but when uh, i think i hope we are uh, like you all heard of ethereum now okay while like uh, when ethereum came into existence or uh, like it when ethereum came into existence it bring a revolutionary technology or revolutionary change in the field of blockchain like that was smart contract okay what a smart contract 
smart contracts are self executable codes okay uh, we will uh, write some codes in the uh, like blockchain we will write some codes in the blockchain and uh, like if the uh, conditions of that uh, code uh, like if we, if the conditions of that code uh, is achieved okay then the code will self uh, like uh, it will uh, execute uh, on itself okay we don't need any other push external push uh, to execute that code okay the if the conditions is meted it will automatically execute the uh, code will be automatically executed okay uh, so what's the benefit of that we can build the dx are built with this technology only and what's the major benefit of that let's take an example okay so uh, imagine that uh, i am going to uh, like i uh, like i completed my uh, degree and uh, i am going to uh, like uh, uh, receive the certificate from my college okay the college has to issue my certificate or my university has to issue my uh, certificate by verifying uh, that if i am eligible uh, to eligible or not okay so if uh, like suppose a like some uh, the authorities the have a personal grudge with me okay they can okay they they can uh, like uh, like uh, they can they uh, like uh, they can stop like uh, they can they can stop giving uh, me the uh, certificates or they can stop issuing uh, me the certificates okay they can uh, like they can decide to not to give me the certificate okay that's uh, possible e even if i am eligible due to personal grudge they can uh, like do that okay but if we what, what happens if we if we uh, execute the whole system with a code okay if we remove that uh, authority part from that if the uh, like if we set a code uh, like uh, to uh, what yeah if we set a code to uh, verify whether i am eligible or not to share certificate if the uh, if i am eligible it will be automatically executed and issue a certificate so since it is a code it doesn't have a personal grudge with anyone okay so that's the basic concept with smart contract it will be automatically executed once the conditions are meted okay here the condition was uh, like if i am eligible to uh, like receive the certificate or not like my mark and all if i i pass the exam and all so if it uh, like verified the, uh, if it verified that if it verified my eligibility then uh, it will automatically issue the certificate there is no issue of personal grudge so if i am eligible i will definitely get that okay so that's the major uh, like uh, point or there's the major uh, like uh, okay major advantage of smart contract okay so uh, this is how dapps are built or this is how dapps are censorship resistant and all okay since no governments and all can shut down these dapps because of uh, because these dapps are built with smart contracts as i said no one can uh, like uh, since these smart contracts are writing on blockchain no one can uh, like change anything in the contract okay no one can change anything contract no one can shut down this contract since it is automatically executable no one can manipulate uh, this as well okay uh, so uh, these are the things uh, i like decided to cover in this session i think i am running out of time now so like okay so we have this uh, so far we have discussed what blockchain is blockchain is a decentralized uh, sorry uh, first we covered what web3 is uh, web3 is basically decentralization there are there are so many decentralized uh, uh, distributed ledger technologies in web3 or powering web3 like blockchain hashgraph dac and all so what is blockchain blockchain is a decentralized distributed ledger of technology then uh, the all the data in the blockchain are stored in the form of block in the in the form of chain of blocks uh, so it is uh, like the every block is connected to a previous block uh, with the like uh, with the hashing system uh, then then what we discussed then we discussed about dapps dapps are uh, like built with smart contracts so uh, like it is self executable uh, no like uh, so uh, like so there is complete democracy like the whole point of this whole system is bringing complete democracy to the world that's the major uh, like pro like uh, major aim of this technology okay uh so yeah uh, that that's all about today so if anyone have any doubts you can ask now i think nivet uh, just to keep in uh, mind the time frame uh, what if you can just drop in your telegram people can you know get back to you with doubts and we can just go ahead with uh, it yeah i will uh, like Uh, okay i will give my twitter id you can follow that and uh, like ask any doubts if you have 
and also i am writing contents on twitter okay so if you want to learn more about web3 you can uh, refer that okay that's amazing will... okay that here is my twitter that was a great Sorry? session thank you yeah we can see the uh, your twitter please follow him and then uh, if you really like the session please tag him and give a feedback as well and we'll move on to it to session uh, which is going to be about uh, refi use cases so this is basically uh, for the hackathon that we are going to do at the green pill festival it's a virtual plus an irl hackathon uh, where we'll be starting with ideation and brainstorming uh, session from tomorrow so if you guys have not yet registered for the hackathon i'm going to drop uh, the link here uh, in the chat so that you can register and if you guys have already registered are not part of our telegram group yet I have dropped a second link to for the telegram group right um, handing over the stage to Irtu uh, please take over and we can start talking about some of the use cases and hey everyone this is uh, Ritu from Atlantis and uh... Uh, I know we all had a very technical session. Now I'm going to speak more about uh, the kind of use cases that's there around refi and what exactly refi is. So what I'll do is that I'll uh, uh, share my screen and you all can focus on the screen and I'll get my video. Uh, it's going to be a small 15 minute session. We're just going to quickly go through what exactly uh, is being built during a Green Pill Festival and uh, what exactly uh, uh, these solutions being built solved. So yeah, uh, 15 minutes, I'll keep it very uh, light and I'll ensure that you guys don't fall asleep, all right? Uh, I hope everyone can see my screen now. Yep. Yeah. So today, uh, like I said, like two main things that we are going to cover is like what exactly is refi and also like what are the refi use cases. Uh, before we get started with that, I'll just give a small introduction to myself. I'm uh, Ritu from Atlantis. I'm one of the co-founders. Uh, my background is I, like Nivid, I'm also a mechanical engineer, uh, but I pass off way back. And I have almost 10 years of experience in startups. And uh, most of my experience uh, in the past six, seven years has been around product design. And uh, for the last five years, I've had my own company. And Atlantis is my second venture in climate. And uh, so clearly, I'm here to speak about climate and blockchain and how these things come together. And to give you a little bit of insight into what Atlantis is, uh, so we started Atlantis, was started by a bunch of uh, entrepreneurs who were really into the sustainability space. And we realized that there were so many things missing for uh, people like us who were trying to build solutions that will help us solve some of these climate and social related problems. And that's how we came together to build Atlantis. And with Atlantis, what we're building is a digital community of change makers, we call. Uh, pretty much what we are looking at is to help uh, people who do positive actions around climate and social impact to be to earn and get rewarded. We all know about uh, uh, volunteering and social workers and how uh, they are not the most highly paid. Uh, the sector is not that uh, highly uh, populated with talented folks. Uh, so there's a very famous saying that environmentalists die poor. Uh, and this has led to a lot of big, big problems that we have in our world. Like all of us see climate change, poor road during COVID, we saw poor hospitals, right? Uh, so these kind of big uh, social problems need solutions. And we are trying to bring these solutions using blockchain. And, uh, so that's what we do. And we are, we are one of the first ever refi projects and it sounds like we're very old, but we were just born in 2022. So you can just understand how young the space is. And with DeFi, what we're doing is we combine climate solutions and blockchain. Right? And we currently have like three active projects in India. Uh, we have a project in Chikmagalur, which is in Karnataka, uh, where we help uh, people, uh, rural people get better access to water. And we build this through a decentralized water network that we're putting together there. Uh, we have a project in Gokarna, uh, uh, which is around uh, 
agroforestry and mangrove plantation. Again, here we are trying to do things with the local community to build climate projects on ground. Right, we have uh, almost catered to more than 500 green leaves and you can probably say that over 60% of these jobs were given to women from underserved community. So that's all about like us and like, what we have been doing in this space. So ReFi is a new space. Blockchain technology in itself is new. And in that a particular space is where ReFi comes. Uh, but why should you care about this? And what's the impact of it is what today's conversation is going to be. Uh, before I get into that, I just want to say that we are not the only company building in this space. There are... Uh, tons of companies. In fact, in 2019, uh, the stats were 22 companies in refi. In 2023, there's more than 1,000 projects. So a lot of people around the world are waking up to, okay, there's climate change, there's social inequality. We need to build technology around this. Like, we are done building delivery apps and e-commerce. So there's a lot of engineers and people trying to bring technology to agriculture climate solution, uh, solar, renewable energy, right? So what you're looking at is like projects all around the world. This is a huge space and it's grown in my eyes because I've been in this space for the longest time now. And it's huge amount of talent that is flocking into the space. And we thought naturally from India, we needed to create some kind of moment for this. Right? So the main question, like why should you care about refund? Uh, so solving climate change and Social injustice is a multi-trillion dollar challenge. It's not a bee, it's a tree. It's a multi-trillion dollar and that means it's huge. It's humongous, right? If you think about in terms of numbers, almost 78% of global population, right, is subject to climate and social injustice. So there is a huge need to build solutions around this space. But, you know, there has been something that was missing in this space. And we feel refi could be the missing link that could fix the space. Because as you know, the space so far has not seen too many talent come and we are gonna see this change. And why we are seeing this change is because primarily this space lacks a lot of transparency and incentives. Uh, when I say transparency, all of us know, and all of us would have probably done some kind of donation, right? We would have probably donated to some charity or to some social impact work. And we donate and we don't know what happens. We sometimes get a certificate, but that's pretty much it, right? We have no clue where this money goes, what happens. And because of this, there is a huge trust problem and lack of transparency in the sector. That's preventing people from donating and doing more philanthropy related work, right? Next is this lack of incentives. Will any of our parents tell, uh, no, no, you stop studying, don't become an engineer or don't go to degree college, become a social Will any of them say? They won't say. Why? Because it's not lucrative. It's not got incentives. But people who do social impact, they generally tend to touch way, way more lives than just their own life, right? We were like, see, this is a good use case. There is a problem. We need more people to take up these green jobs. So ReFi solves for both of these things, right? It brings together blockchain and social impact together. And by doing this, what we're doing is we are redefining how incentives are given to people who are in social impact. Like how can we bring transparency? If someone donated, there is a crisis, there is $100 donated. Those $100 need to be seen. Where did it go? Who got the end benefit of it? When we are able to see this visually, all of our behavior is gonna change because we'll believe in the system better, right? And this is what we are trying to do. And think about it like this. What if you could earn from recycling? Uh, what if you could earn from harvesting the rainwater? Uh, maybe from planting trees, right? These are the kind of possibilities that is happening now with ReFi, where Web3 communities are building projects on ground around planting trees. Then they're de developing a token around it and they're getting crowdfunded for it. And we know projects that raised close to $100,000 last year just to do some of these on-ground planting trees, growing agroforestry, and a bunch of things like this. This is good money that was being paid. This was unheard of good for, right? 
So the whole crux of refi is they're trying to build regenerative finance. That is financial systems that will help the people and the planet. Because most of our economic financial systems we have today incentivizes people to as much as possible extract. And uh, this is the main reason why we are seeing more emissions happening. We see more shortage in supply during COVID and stuff. We see supply chain issues. This is because things have to be made somewhere else. So most of these European American countries, they tend to buy all of their things from developing nations. And because there is an incentive to extract for low price without caring about, hey, are we cutting down too many trees, right? So now we have reached a point where we are starting to experience climate change almost on a day-to-day -day basis. To tell you in numbers, in 2022, out of 365 days in India, 80% of the days we had climate crisis in our country. So it's not like a unique thing that happens rarely. It's almost every day. One day you'll hear one village being flooded. The next day you'll hear another village being in drought, right? So this is a reality. And we are trying to really bring blockchain technology and with it distributed intelligence, decentralized intelligence to build these kind of public goods. So what could refi use cases be? <clears throat> I know people who build digital products, they build software, they build tokens. I know people who build IOTA devices that will help some of these refi projects. I know people who create content around this, right? Um, so the space has a lot of opportunity. Any Anybody with any kind of skill set could end up having a refi job because all you're doing is bringing what you're good at and using it for maybe producing quality climate and social action. So it could be in any way. But today, what we are going to do is these use cases have been split specifically to look at key areas in refi. And it is divided into three spaces. You could build use cases uh, around climate solution, which is you could think of renewable energy, green buildings, uh, MRV. MRV means measure, record, and verify. Um, it is a kind of concept used uh, to fund projects that say they grow trees, for example. So these kind of projects need to have some kind of method to verify that, hey, I have really grown these trees. So MRV is a technology that's used for that. People are building these solutions on blockchain. People are uh, going and partnering with hardware companies who create direct air capture and you know, building blockchain solutions on top of that. Uh, so we're seeing a lot of interesting use cases we are also seeing a lot of impact, social impact DAOs being formed. Again, a very interesting way to form groups, right? Communities who can do collective things. Like look at Phoenix, they are a DAO. Atlantis, we have a DAO. So we have people from all around the world working on this, right? And the third most important thing what refi in terms of use cases is tokenizing carbon credits. So carbon credits is basically nothing but a kind of incentive or money given to people who do activities to reduce climate change. Uh, how do they do it? Uh, so big, big companies in the US and the Europe, they uh, have a lot of emissions. They produce a lot of carbon footprint. So they fund projects in India, in Southeast Asia to grow plants, uh, to uh, maybe harvest solar, and then they fund these projects. And in return, they issue carbon credits. So this is how the world tries to incentivize people to start taking climate positive actions. We also have platforms like Gitcoin, where uh, you could be doing a social impact project and get crowdfund. In fact, that's how we bootstrapped initially. We were able to raise quite a few, quite a bit of money from Gitcoin, uh, and we were able to bootstrap where we did these impact projects. On and another thing is Im impact to earn. This is a concept that even Atlantis is bringing where we encourage people to do uh, bounties that is maybe write a blog about climate or harvest rainwater. You do simple, simple activities and you get paid in crypto tokens. This is something that Atlantis is also exploring. So I will end this conversation by saying that this is a huge space. So when you think about refi, think on one side, it is all climate solution and social impact. On the other side, we're using the latest technology that is available. 
building these kind of public goods especially should be done in decentralized infrastructure because i think our early speaker also spoke about how blockchain helps fight the concept of centralizing imagine tomorrow you build a water network and it is centralized if then only few people have control over it you won't have control over your water but what if you could build a decentralized network where you earn your part for keeping the water quality good harvesting enough water that's true democracy for us right and uh, refi is a really good use case to explore this concept and to explore how you can build so many interesting things in uh, social impact in fact i was just talking today morning to a person who started something called litter coin and he's do, do using that to incentivize people to pick up litter you know they collect it collect it pick it up in kgs then come and hand it off which gets verified they get paid in those tokens these are the kind of products that will bring real world use cases uh, so in short uh, we this is the whole idea and we are in fact with green pill festival we have a bunch of uh, refi related tracks that you can go check out on our website and uh, we also have a lot of uh, tracks around sustainable development goals which is sdgs which is nothing but a lot of social and climate goals that we have uh, so yeah i'll i'll end the talk with that and uh, yeah happy if anyone has any questions that was great ritu um a lot of folks who when they are going to start ideation and brainstorming i think um, mm -hmm. this would be really helpful uh, i actually wanted to write in the chat that you know you should take a screenshot of the three circles that you were uh, showcasing but nevertheless i'll share the i can share this yeah Yeah, I'll okay. share the entire recording uh, on the Telegram group. So emphasizing on this sure. again, if you guys haven't uh, joined the Telegram group yet, uh, please do so. And we're having, uh, we'll be having a session tomorrow um, on uh, beginning with the ideation and brainstorming for the hackathon by Gyan Lakshmi and Laisha. So please don't forget to join in uh, for the same tomorrow, same time. and also this is the phoenix skills telegram if you guys are in part of that yet i think uh, we've exceeded about 7 minutes of today's session uh, but it was really great and worth it i believe i'm going to stop the recording now and uh